As Russia and China hold joint drills, other regional powers are stepping up their cooperation. The leaders of the United States, Japan and South Korea are meeting today at the U.S. presidential retreat Camp David. Joe Biden is hosting his counterparts for their first ever trilateral summit. While the U.S. is close to both, relations between Japan and South Korea are tricky. The meeting could lead to more military cooperation and exchange in response to growing regional threats. It was a sign of warming relations. The South Korean president and the Japanese prime minister praying together in Hiroshima at the monument memorializing Korean victims of the atomic bomb. In 1945, tens of thousands of Korean laborers were in Hiroshima following decades of brutal Japanese colonial rule over Korea. The rare rapprochement was spurred on by the war in Ukraine, a reminder of tensions in their own region. President Joe Biden seized the moment, hoping to persuade his two allies to cooperate closer militarily with the U.S. as well as each other. But in South Korea, many are not ready to forgive Japan for its historical atrocities, and some fear a military partnership will increase tensions with North Korea. Last month, North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un invited Russian and Chinese leaders to a military parade showcasing his latest long-range missiles. The three nuclear powers showed a united front. And when the US, Japan and South Korea recently held joint navy drills in the Sea of Japan, Russia and China followed suit with their own drills in the Pacific. When it comes to Taiwan, China will be closely following the summit at Camp David. Taipei keeps rehearsing for an attack, and Beijing's ambitions to one day take the island remain. China has long accused Washington of meddling in what it sees as its internal affairs. It is likely to see closer U.S. military ties with Japan and South Korea as a further threat. Let's bring in uh, DW correspondent James Chater in Taipei. James, a U.S. official says that the U.S., South Korea and Japan will agree to crisis consultations at the summit today. What else can we expect from the summit? Well, on these crisis consultations first, what these three countries want essentially is to deepen channels of communication at moments of crisis as they face more threats from North Korea and China. Some of the other things we're expecting from this summit are enhanced intelligence sharing capabilities and also potentially cooperation on military exercises. But most importantly, what these three countries want from this summit is to make it a regular event. Now, why is that such a big deal? Well, in the lead up to this summit, I've been speaking to analysts and basically asking them, you know, say five years ago, would it have been possible to get the leaders of Japan and South Korea in the same room? And they simply kind of laugh, laughed me out the door. These two countries are both US treaty allies, but have long standing grievances with each, each, other, each other, as that report mentioned. This summit, I think, is evidence that the geopolitical winds in East Asia are changing. There's a shared feeling among the leaders that those past grievances need to stay in the past and that they have to look forward to emerging threats in the region. Now, before Japanese Prime Minister Kishida left for Tokyo, sorry, left uh, for Washington, he had this to say. <laughs> It will be a historic opportunity for us to strengthen the strategic partnership between our three countries. Amid threats to a free and open international order based on the rule of law. We will build on the foundations of our bilateral relationships with both the United States and South Korea, which are stronger than ever. Japan's uh, prime minister, they're praising the relationship between the three countries. But when it comes to Japan and South Korea, this, this hasn't always been the case. What's brought them closer, James? Well, most agree that for Japan and South Korea, Russia's invasion of Ukraine was a real wake-up call. Something that Japanese Prime Minister Kishida has repeatedly talked about since then is this idea that, you know, Ukraine is today, could be uh, East Asia's tomorrow. The threat he's talking about, of course, North Korea's growing nuclear arsenal and Chinese threats of military action against Taiwan. 
The other factor here, though, is Russia. Both China and North Korea have been expanding cooperation with Moscow despite Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. Earlier this week, we saw Russian and Chinese naval ships operating together in waters near the Japanese islands of Okinawa, which are really close to Taiwan in this southwestern part of Japan. And then today, we even had an announcement from Japan that they had to scramble fighter jets after it saw Russian planes over the Sea of Japan. So this summit shows that there's greater urgency around these threats in the region and that there's a recognition that if Russia, China and North Korea are going to be working together in a way that they perceive as reshaping the international order, then the US, Japan and South Korea are going to have to work together too if they want to protect it. That's a DW's a James Chater in Taipei. Many thanks, James.